Hi, I'm Aldias in Medium, and thank you so much for tuning in today. I want to try to bring religion and spirituality closer together, and this is what this pod is all about. I will talk about my own thoughts and feelings as I am both LDS and have spiritual gifts, something that I've had my whole life, but I always thought that it was hard to combine these gifts with my religion. This has torn me into two directions and I have talked to many people who feel the same way. I can't choose not to have my spiritual gifts, but I can choose how I use them. And I always want to use them for good and to help others. I believe my heavenly parents gave them to me for a reason. So. This is me. Join my quest for knowledge. Episode 11, 11, 2022. This sounds really interesting. Lots of ones and twos there. Well, it was two years ago that we broadcasted our first podcast. I really don't want to go back and listen to those first tries, but we did it. Just started and dived head in first, not knowing where this journey would bring us or me. I just had this itch inside of me, this prompting that wouldn't leave me alone. And the first year went over my wildest imagination. And no, I don't reach hundreds of thousands with my podcast, but I have faith that the ones I need to reach will find me. I'm really grateful for the 13,500 some downloads that we've gotten so far. Last year I did summarize of how the year had been and I'll do this this year too. My life hasn't changed so much. I still live in my home, still have three sons at home, still work on the same work, but inside of me I have changed a lot. I might look the same on the outside, but on the inside, I feel my inner butterfly is starting to become stronger and stronger. I am better at setting boundaries and to say no without feeling guilty. I've started to become more selfish, And that is so crazy because the more selfish I get, the more energy I have to help others. I've met my soul and I've learned how to communicate with it through mudras and muscle testing. I've started to understand what God wants me to do with my life. Even though I feel I have some pieces of the puzzle still to find or to fit in, at least I start seeing the framework being done. And now it's time to start putting it together. Last night, Jeffrey R. Holland was in Stockholm, Sweden, and gave a talk. I've got so many answers to questions I've had in my heart, and I'm so grateful for the answers he provided me with. I'll make an episode of the things he said, because it was such a strong talk. But he gave me hope. I don't know about you, but for me the energies have been crazy for weeks. Just absolutely draining and heavy. And I've been struggling to survive, it feels like. But this week, it felt like the dark energies eased up, and I felt it lighter. It's hard to explain, but I talked to one of my best friends, and she said she understood because she felt the difference. And for me, and a lot of people waking up to the world that is more based on energies and frequencies and vibrations, it's hard when we get bombarded with heavy energies, and it's getting darker outside, colder and rainy weather, which adds to the feeling of gloom. I know through classes I've taken that you can purify yourself, bubble yourself with energy, have crystals as your guardians and absorbers of negative energy, but I don't really think those techniques work all that great. What I've found works the best is being in acceptance and gratitude. Life gets so much better and I need to work a bit more on just accepting and the gratitude and know that every experience that I have is designed for me specifically to grow as a spirit child of God. One of the things that have been hard is being alone. I really don't like being alone, but I've realized I've got some amazing friends and I needed to learn to be alone and to be content with this situation. No bitterness, no resentment, just accepting what is and feeling grateful for everything that I have. And I do have a lot of blessings in my life to be grateful about. This life is just a school. It's not the eternity, and I can make good of the life I have here, especially if I can watch some good K-dramas on my free time. I'm still as hooked as ever, but right now, I need this. The energies in the dramas, I just love it. And if you haven't watched one, you don't know what you're missing. And I have a list on some really good shows. Just let me know and I'll post the list. I think the 
course I took this summer was one of the highlights this year. It just opened up my eyes to a lot of things. I think I really started to understand the concept of forgiving too. Not quite there yet, not 100% forgiving. But Elder Holland really emphasized that God wants us to sacrifice a broken heart. And even though three years ago I lived in this sort of imaginary bliss, I got my life ripped apart and started to build a new me from the ruins of what was. And today, I'm so grateful that He loved me enough to break my heart in order to mend it with His love and His touch. And I don't think I've ever had a better relationship with my heavenly parents or with myself. And I've met amazing people, just like me, wanting to get a world of faith blend together with the spiritual gifts we have in order to be the best versions of ourselves and to help serve the world the best we can. I realized that my gifts have increased in power when I use them, but in periods when I've been low, they also diminish a little, like a dimmer light. When I use them, they shine brighter, but when I don't use them, they fade a bit. And it's like with everything in life, and especially muscles. If you use them, you get stronger and bigger. If you don't use them, it goes away. I'm getting ready for Christmas and the celebration of my 50th birthday. 50 years? <laughs> that is so crazy. I still feel like I'm 25. Oh well, can't really stop time and then there's this new year coming up. I haven't decided on an advent calendar yet. I mean, I really liked doing it last year, but it took some effort and I'm a bit more tired this year, so we'll just have to see where inspiration sparks. If I can ask for one thing as a birthday present, it would be a message on Messenger from you. Everyone that is listening, just write a little note, tell me a story from your life, or just say hello. That would actually be the best present ever. Sometimes the best things in life is free. And my birthday is on December 27th. Hint, hint. And my sister's birthday is on December 11th. So, double hint. Today to this episode, I'd like to read the beautiful poem, The Touch of the Master's Hand. Because it means so much to me. And I feel like I am that old violin. But with the love and encouragement, I can make some beautiful contributions to this world. So thank you for staying with me. For these past two years, I have no idea what the future looks like. But I know time is flying by. And I am absolutely sure that the time of the second coming is approaching fast. And we need to buckle up. Because it's going to be an amazing ride. Be the light. Share the light spread the light and shine this is my journey thank you so much for keeping me company today please download like share and subscribe and help spread the light and spread the word to expand our community let's bring more love peace and unity to this world take care of yourself and your loved ones always be grateful kind and loving be brave and remember to step out of your comfort zone and smile if you support us on Patreon, you will get access to our meditations and extra materials so you can download them as mp3. Also, we now have a Facebook group, which you can access from our Facebook community. Please answer the questions as you apply to participate. It will be a safe haven where we can keep discussing religion and spirituality, our spiritual gifts and self-development. Remember, one person can make a difference, but together we can change the world. The Touch of the Master's Hand by Mira Brooks Welch T'was battered and scarred, and the auctioneer thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. What am I bidding, good fox, he cried. Who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar, a dollar then two, only two? Two dollars, and who'll make it three? Three dollars once and three dollars twice, going for three, but no. From the room, far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loosened strings, he played a melody pure and sweet as caroling angel sings. The music ceased and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, said, What am I bid for this old violin? And he held it up with a bow. A thousand dollars, and who'll make it two? 
two thousands and who make it three. Three thousand once, three thousand twice, and going and going and gone, said he. The people cheered, but some of them cried. We don't quite understand. What changed its worth? Swift came the reply, the touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune, and battered and scarred with sin, is auctioned cheap to the thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He is going once, and going twice, he is going and almost gone. But the master comes, and the foolish crowd never can quite understand the worth of his soul and the change that is wrought by the touch of the master's hand.